For my supplies today, I have a block of Fabriano Artistico 140 pound cold pressed watercolor paper. This is 100% cotton, which is great quality and it's gonna hold the water really well. It's also a block, which means the sides are glued down, except for this one little corner where you can peel it off of the pad whenever you're finished with your painting. And what I love about blocks is that having the sides of the block glued down keeps the paper from warping and buckling while you're painting with a lot of water. I have a porcelain palette here and five different colors I'm gonna use for this blue butterfly today. A couple of jars of water and two small round brushes. I have a size five round brush and a size two round brush. The colors I'm using today are Cadmium Red Light by M. Graham. Of course, you can use any red, and this is just for the spots on the butterfly, so you don't need a ton of paint here. Just a tiny dot is all you need. And I have Burnt Umber by Daniel Smith. This color will be useful for some of the warmer hints in the butterfly, and also I'm gonna use it to mix with the indigo to create black. And here's my indigo. This is one of my go-to colors on my palette. I use this color almost every single day. And then for the beautiful blues within the butterfly, I have two different colors. I'm using ultramarine blue and this cobalt teal blue. And these are gonna serve as the beautiful colors inside of the butterfly's wings. Now I've already sketched on my butterfly and you can see that I outlined the little highlights that we're gonna need to avoid with the paint. And so that's gonna help me plan ahead for my lightest areas. When you're doing a painting that has dark darks and light lights, you wanna start with the lightest areas first. In watercolor painting, you can always go darker, but you can't always, it's not quite as easy to go lighter. So I'm gonna start with the blue color inside of the butterfly's wings. I'm gonna start with clean water and paint it all over the area where the blue is going to go. And I'm gonna extend that water a little bit beyond my marking for where the black starts. That's because I want the paint to flow into that area a little bit. And if you want, you can do one wing at a time if you're worried about your paper drying out too fast, but I don't think it's a big deal. I like to start with both wings at the same time because then I know I have an even mixture of the colors that I wanna put down. So now that that's glossy wet and just damp enough, we can start to drop in some color. So on my palette, I'm gonna mix up a little bit of my ultramarine blue and gently paint that across the top of the wing on each side. And a little bit along the edge where it's gonna meld into the black. Don't be too worried about painting specific details yet. Right now we're just enjoying the paint flowing wet and wet across the wet surface of the paper. Quickly rinsing my brush and grabbing that cobalt teal. And I'm gonna drop that in. Right next to the ultramarine blue. Rinsing my brush and then pulling some of that paint over into the areas of the wings that are gonna be a little bit lighter. And you can always grab more paint if you want to go a little bit darker. While it's still wet, you can continue to add more paint, dab it in. But as it begins to become matte and a little bit dry looking, you'll need to leave it alone at that point. So there's our first layer of blue. I'm going to take my burnt umber and paint along the top side of the wings. And I'm letting it touch the wet paint of the blue because I want those colors to blend slightly. Taking that all the way across the top of the wing, but there are some white spots here on either side. So just be careful that you don't paint over those. And then a little bit inside of the body. Now 
Now I'm taking clean water inside the area that's going to be black, but I'm painting around the white dots. I just want this edge here along for the edge between the blue and the black to be blended and smooth. So I'm wetting it first and then I'm going to mix up some black using ultramarine and indigo. Very richly pigmented combination of color here. And then while that paper is still wet, I'm dropping it in right up next to the blue. You want to make sure you mix enough of this paint that you have a lot to work with fairly quickly. Now if the colors are not blending, you can take a damp brush, and I'm actually going to put a little bit of the ultramarine on it, and you can encourage the blending of those two colors by just gently stroking along the edge of those shapes. I like to switch back and forth between two different brushes sometimes. Sometimes I have one that's just got water on it if I need to re-wet an area quickly while the other is loaded with paint and ready to go. So for now, I'm just painting right up to my white dots. And you can encourage the blending by pulling some of that black up into the blue area with your cleaner brush. So you can just see I'm softening along this edge. And now I'm going to switch to my tinier brush and continue to paint black inside of those wings. We're going to start on the left side. And this will be the most time consuming part of the painting if you decide to do it this way. If you're worried about these little spots and painting over them, you can always go back over it with white gouache or a gel pen if you accidentally paint over one of your spots. Or ahead of time, you can cover those spots with masking fluid and then just paint quickly over them with your black. There are all different ways to preserve the white of the paper or to add the white back in. Really what you need is a steady hand and patience. <laughs> That's all it takes. This combination of burnt umber and indigo is my favorite combination to create black. What I like about it is that you can adjust how warm or cool the mixture is depending on how much brown you have versus the blue. You can have a warm black or a cool black or a neutral black, which is an even mixture of the two. So just very carefully painting around those spots. You can twist your brush periodically to make sure that it's maintaining a sharp point. You'll see me doing that pretty often when I'm painting these tiny details. And then once I get my black painted around those spots, I'm just gently swooping my brush along the area that's already dry just so we can get more of a blended effect of the black over the black with no strange looking edges forming. Now, if you want your butter, butterfly to be more vibrant, you can go over it again with another coat of paint once that first layer is dry. If your paint isn't flowing very easily, you might just need to dip it in the water without en entirely rinsing. Just dipping it in the water will add enough moisture back into your brush to get the paint flowing again without removing the paint from your brush. Now, if you want to, you can reverse the order that you do this. I probably could have painted the red spots first, and maybe I should have painted the red spots first just so that I minimize the risk of this indigo mixture blending into the red. But as long as we let it all dry, that shouldn't be a problem. Just make sure that your painting is completely dry before you go back in with another wet color up next to this really, really dark color. There we go. So with the black of the wings painted on, now we can start adding a few little details to the tops of the wings just to articulate some of these shapes a little better. So here on the top of the wing, I see these wing veins streaking across the top. I've watered down my brush a little bit 
so that it's more of a gray on my brush instead of a stark black. And I'm using that to gently paint in these wing veins. I see a shape coming down like that. And then a real distinctive wing vein right here. And then this is where the top wing overlaps the bottom wing with another vein just above it. And then one right here and one right here. And then in the bottom wing, there's a vein that comes from the connecting point right here and almost cuts right through the middle. And then two more here and a fork shaped one right there. As we darken up the body and add those red spots, it'll start to look even more realistic. So now I have more pigmented indigo in my brush and I'm painting the inside of the abdomen. Rinsing slightly. And then I'm going to switch the direction of my brush strokes to go sideways, mimicking the shapes that I see in that abdomen. And then filling it in with more of a flat wash across the top. There are a couple little highlights on the eyes and in the head. So if you want to paint around those, you can. Or you could just fill it in entirely black. It's totally up to you how much detail or how little detail you want to include. Definitely takes a little more patience to include all of that. And I need to dip my brush in the water to get a nice smooth antenna. And just darkening a little bit more in the body. All right, now across the top of the other wing, we're gonna add those wing veins again. A black marking here right up next to the spot and a marking that comes down. All right, and then this distinctive one here, I'm gonna water it down a little bit, it's just slightly too dark. Comes all the way across to there and then down. And then let's define the separation of the top wing from the lower wing. Add that wing vein. And then there's just one more right in the middle here. And we're gonna start here at the connecting point. Draw one down to the middle, two in that space, and then our fork-shaped wing vein right here. And you can see the two sides are quite symmetrical and beautiful. And now let's just add a couple of more little details along the top of the wing, almost these tiger stripe details that I see in my reference photo. And a light, another light wash of ultramarine here at the bottom of the wing. Rinsing my brush and then just softening that edge. Rinsing again and softening some more. And now I'm gonna take my cobalt and mix it a little bit with the ultramarine. And just darken up where the top wing overlaps the bottom wing slightly. All right, a little bit more burnt umber in the body. I think it needs, it's a little too light still. So I'm just adding a flat wash across the top and now the spots inside of the wings are not completely white. So I'm gonna fill them in with a watered down ultramarine, just so they're not so stark. Again, make sure that your indigo is completely dry before you do this step. Rinse my brush. And now I'm gonna grab some of that cadmium red. And I'm just gonna use my pure cadmium red where I see the red spots on our butterfly. These are all on the bottom wings.
A fun thing you can do if you want to is to add a background to your painting. I'm going to add the suggestion of some leaves. And to do that, I'm going to need some green. Now you'll notice I didn't have any green on my palette. So we can actually make some green. All we need to do is take some burnt umber and mix a little bit of that cobalt teal blue. We get this really, really earthy green. And so I'm going to start to paint that on quickly and in a very, very brushy style. Very much just suggesting a leaf without actually entirely articulating it. And I'm just going to grab a slightly larger brush here. This is a flat wash brush by Princeton. And I'm going to use that with a little bit of water to push around my brush strokes. And you can actually overlap that into your butterfly a little bit. Start to paint underneath the wings. Carefully avoid those highlights that you worked so hard on. Going straight up and down above and below the butterfly. Remember while the paint is still wet, you can push and pull it quite a bit. But as it begins to dry, you'll want to leave it alone. I'm adding a tiny touch of that cadmium red right up here, down here. And the reason for that is I want to add just a little bit more color harmony. We had that red in those tiny spots on the butterfly's wings. And so I want to bring it into the background too. And then I'm going to take a teeny bit of ultramarine and just add some droplet effects. If you want, you can add a drip effect to your painting and you just need some wet paint and a paper towel underneath to catch it and just let it drip down. Plenty of water will encourage it. So just play with this. Have so much fun with the background. I love doing backgrounds because to me, they're my opportunity to just experiment with brush strokes with lots of water and just see what happens. It's a total blast. I'm going to add some dark color right here underneath the butterfly, just to almost indicate a shadow and to give the butterfly some solidarity within its setting. This will help it all feel more three-dimensional. And so there we go. There is our finished blue butterfly painting.